Welcome to Kanata Basin, one of the largest and best remaining grasslands in the Great Plains. Cradled by the badlands of South Dakota, this is a rich home for America's native wildlife. The loss of grasslands, poisoning of prairie dogs, and disease nearly wiped out the black-footed ferret species. Curious and crafty, the ferrets are natural predators of the prairie dog. Kanata Basin is now home to one of the largest populations of black-footed ferrets in the wild. To save them, the Nature Conservancy is helping prairie wildlife research capture and vaccinate ferrets on land owned by the Conservancy and the U.S. Forest Service. Surveillance starts at sundown. Um, we see a lot of activity between about 2.30 in the morning and 4, and the earliest we've been actually trapping our ferrets so far this week is actually at 4.30 in the morning. It is several hours into the night when they first spot the luminescent green taptum of the black-footed ferret's eyes. Okay, so we just spotted our first ferret of the night. So I It is a rare and exciting moment. Very careful right now to make sure that we uh, see which hole he is going into, because that's the hole that we will set the trap in. So the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to set the trap. The reason why you have the blanket actually over the trap is because it mimics the prairie dog burrow, so the ferret will actually climb all the way to the top of the trap. And then we'll come back and check this in a few minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and see if we have ourselves a ferret. All right, looks good. Luckily, our team is successful. You are brand new, buddy. You're going in for your checkup. Oh. <laughs> I'm excited. Hi. So we are going to transfer the ferret from the trap into the PVC piping. So now our goal is to get this ferret back for processing um, through that process and back in the burrow as quickly as possible. So the black footed ferrets are transferred from the black transport tube into like a gas chamber and that initially knocks them out with isofluorine gas, a very common anesthetic used in veterinary situations for small animals. And we then put a breathing mask on them. They continue to breathe isofluorine gas with mixed with oxygen. As long as they're breathing that, they will remain unconscious. And that allows us to give them a full checkup as well as to implant them with microchips and give them vaccines for both plague and canine distemper. Okay, that's now her microchip number. After I'm done working the animal, I will take some women's hair dye and actually place uh, some splotches of hair dye, sometimes in a particular pattern, on the ferret's neck or side of the body. This way, after that ferret is released again back into the wild, a spotlighter can easily see that ferret has been marked through the dye. She is released, finding herself back at her burrow within an hour's time female kit back into her burrow after she just got her second checkup of this season. So here she goes. Right now, the black fruit ferret population in the wild stands at about a thousand animals. To reach the recovery goals, we want to have about 1,500 breeding adults in the wild to take us from endangered down to threatened. And to go from threatened off endangered species list would require about 3,000 black footed ferret adults in the wild. So right now, of those thousand that exist out in the wild, we are at approximately four to 500 adults in the wild. So we are incrementally making progress. What we need to really recover black footed ferrets are more places to put them. Without help, the black footed ferret faces a bleak future. Conservation groups like the Nature Conservancy and Prairie Wildlife Research are actively seeking resources to aid the black-footed ferret on her way to recovery and reproduction.